welcome you're watching business today tv with me sakshi patra and this is bts that's behind the scenes a show where we share a sneak peek into the latest business today magazine with all our viewers and joining in on this show with me are my colleagues neetu chandra sharma also joining in is binu paul and also with me is mr manish pant joining in and we're going to be discussing a whole host of interesting stories that have been covered in the latest edition of the business today magazine and here's the first glimpse for all our viewers. viewers and there you can see the founder and MD of Sun Pharma Dilip Shangwi right here on the cover now we all know who he is uh, he's a billionaire who tweets among the top 10 richest people in India and he's the man who leads the largest pharmaceutical company and Neetu here has done the cover story this time so i will kick start the discussion with you Neetu here very interesting time at which uh, the edition comes out because the sun pharma stock is now at a 52 week high level we finally seen uh, the sun uh, shining again just like how the cover image also talks about so help all our viewers first understand neetu what has really led to the turnaround of the company in the last 5 years uh, thank you sakshi uh, uh, see in the last 5 years sun pharma has actually undergone a massive transformation so it has reinvented itself and it is now focused on building additional growth engines for the future so it's uh, sun pharma is the largest pharmaceutical company in india as you just said and it has always been but the company uh, faced a lot of challenges between 2014 and 18 and the reasons were many uh, such as intense pricing pressure in the us market fda related issues and uh, the impact of its acquisition of ranbaxy laboratories that it did in 2014 this this move actually didn't go very well so a mix of factors including renbexy acquisitions it it led to the decline in its profits so so to say in fact it's uh, in 2018 the company's profits plunged around 70% year on year however sun pharma's founder dilip shangwi he has intelligently implemented a renewed strategy with focused on uh, boosting its specialty drugs business and expanding its presence in the indian market as well so um, one of the most significant areas of focus has been the specialty business so for our audience i would like to explain very briefly that what specialty drugs are these are often high cost medicines which required specialized handling and administration to the patients so the specialty business it, it involves the development and marketing of these medicines which are for complex chronic medical conditions like uh, cancer autoimmune diseases hiv aids multiple sclerosis and so on and so forth so sun pharma is strategically invested in this specialty business to move the pharmaceutical value chain and this has resulted in a strong year over year growth so if we look at the global specialty revenues for the company the numbers were whopping uh, 871 million dollars in fy23 which is a uh, 29% increase from the previous year and the company has also experienced uh, you know uh, particularly strong sales in its global elimia brand this is a drug which is uh, used to treat moderate to severe plaque psoriasis which is an inflammatory skin condition so this was about the specialty business so there were other there was another strategy of mergers and acquisitions that turn and out turn around the company so dilip shangwi also invested in research and development and pursued strategic mergers and acquisitions to increase its uh, competencies so recent acquisitions if we uh, look at uh, uh, latest one was concert pharmaceuticals which is a us based pharma company it was done in may 2023 so this uh, kind of uh, strategy has uh, further strengthened sun pharma's specialty business and it has also uh, made uh, previous acquisitions like taro pharmaceuticals dusa pharma insight just to name a uh, uh, few so they all these mergers and acquisitions actually you know boosted its uh, specialty drug offerings actually right another question that i wanted to ask you um, neetu has uh, been on the top of the mind of a lot of investors and analysts as well that you know we have you've also pointed it out in your answer that the us market and the regulations over there have been uh, creating tremendous pressure and the pricing pressures as well how has the company really managed the growth in the us market which is already under tremendous pre- pressure and therefore what is the continued strategy for the domestic market as well see among all uh, pharma companies uh, sun pharma has a very strong presence in the us market 
it has a portfolio of specialty products which i i just mentioned a few minutes ago this offered very attractive profit margins uh, so it has successfully maintained its position in the generics business through a combination of new product launches and market share gains that has been a, a really um, interesting thing for sun pharma to sustain its uh, position and uh, just for our audience generics are uh, pharmaceutical products that are essentially identical to the brand name drugs in terms of their active ingredients dosage forms and then you know route of administration quality and performance so these medications are typically produced after the patent protection expires on the original brand name drug this allows other pharma companies to manufacture and uh, sell the generic versions so they provide an affordable alternative to the uh, brand name drugs so according to a database of iqvia that is a data and analytics firm in the uh, in the us sun pharma is the eighth largest generics pharmaceutical company and it holds the second position in the dermatology market uh, based on prescriptions so in the us the company is also expanding its footprint in the specialty branded market targeting segments such as dermatology ophthalmology and uh, oncology which is uh, cancers so that's the us business contributed around 31% of sun pharma's consolidated revenues in fy23 so despite these pricing pressures and increased competition the company has uh, managed to achieve growth because it has a very strong portfolio and the branded products which are playing an increasingly significant role in its revenue mix are uh, uh, like um, elimia sequa vin levi or domzo these are some branded products which are in the specialty pipeline right. for some so neetu you know uh, what will also be very important to understand is that what's next for the company and how uh, are the challenges placed uh, is the worst behind the company already in terms of the challenges and uh, you know we are already seeing some of the biggest names in the industry in india now entering the online pharma space as well uh, so how is the company now looking looking at those emerging uh, opportunities or challenges so sun pharma has a very clear strategy of uh, uh, increasing its portfolio by mergers and acquisitions which is an organic and inorganic growth so uh, when i was doing the story i was interacting with uh, mr dilip shangvi so i could sense that their future uh, focus is to expand its business in india along with continued investments in the r&d and uh, very strategic initiatives to and then its position in the pharmaceutical industry and the uh, company is also planning to expand its field force in tier 2 and tier 3 towns which uh, will enable the company to expand its geographical footprint and sun pharma is also introducing a lot of innovative products in india a recent example if we uh, consider is sequa it's a prescription medication that is used to treat dry eye disease so it is a branded specialty product developed by sun pharma while speciality remains a clear focus dilip shangvi has a uh, very uh, clear this thing in mind about its comp- uh, company's future strategy it is clearly indicated that it will continue to look at interesting opportunities in dermatology ophthalmology and which are you know phase 3 products which are closer to the market so that the company can invest and bring them to the market faster Absolutely, very very important insights from this interview that all the viewers can definitely garner. Uh, so let's now move on from the pharma space to the Indian venture capital ecosystem. You know, my colleague has examined key development over here, and which is the birth of Peak Fifteen uh, uh, Partners right here. So, uh, Binu, could you help us understand uh, what really led uh, to Sequoia India splitting into the separate entity now? So hi. Uh, so as you know. Uh... the development happened a couple of weeks ago uh, was actually um, a result of a, a growing convergence of uh, you know both us and india business of sequoia the official word is that you know they want to uh, they want to get away from the you know uh, from the portfolio conflict that has been arising from uh, both india and us teams uh and uh, also create a lot more opportunities and open up a lot more windows for their uh, limited partners or investors uh who are specifically investing on the india opportunity now that is the official word but there is uh, you know what we have always um, we have all, always been uh, been told and the, the the word is on the word on the street is that uh there's been a lot of dis- disagreements between the us team and the south asia south east asian partners and there was also concerns among the us and other uh, partners across the globe of sequoia about the growing 
uh, issues of uh, governance uh, and you know portfolio issues that are emerging from the india uh, and southeast asia region so these factors have uh, come together uh, to kind of force a uh, separation uh, the china was moving out of the us uh, you know the parent firm so it is only uh, you know advisable it is only prudent for them to think of the india and southeast asia opportunity as a separate fund Hmm, okay. Uh, Binu, could you also help us understand really what lies ahead now? Yeah, see, if you were to look at the opportunity or the convergence of, uh, you know, strategy as they call it, uh, uh, it stems from the fact that Sequoia's uh, focus on the software opportunities has been growing over the years. So the percentage of their investment uh, or on cross-border potential deals increased from just 10% in 2018 to about 50 to 55 percent in 2023 so uh, which means that you know more than half of india's uh, sorry secure india's portfolio companies have a global market presence so uh, particularly in the us which means potentially each of these their uh, global investments and india investments are competing against each other in the global market so uh, so Sequoia India now peak 15 will have an opportunity to kind of carve uh, itself into a different uh, uh, different market, invest in uh, larger opportunities, and they are now si- trying to set up a U- um, office in the US. And they will uh, they said they will, what they say is that now that we have uh, greater opportunities for our LPs to invest in uh, specific sector uh, uh, s- sector focused startups from India that can uh, grow globally. Secondly, they're also uh, looking at that they sit uh, sit on a large, uh, you know, investment uh, pipeline. They have a large dry powder with them. So they they are still, you know, even after carving out into a separate fund, they're still the largest uh, venture capital investor in India in terms of the money uh, and the capital they have. So they are looking at large opportunities. They can bet on large uh, Indian companies, but the challenge is now with all the slowdown and you know uh, recession fears that are looming, uh, the growth opportunities into Series B and Series re- C rounds where uh, companies raise uh, from 20 million to up to 100 million, the large checks are those opportunities are coming down. So it, that is the only challenge they you know they could actually face. But otherwise, the opportunities is large, large for them. They they being a separate fund, they can actually go out and capture all that they have in the in the whole region. All right. We'll keep an eye out on all those developments going forward from here, Binu. And uh, now uh, let's uh, come to the more interesting part, and that's on Airfit. And Manish has written a very interesting story in this edition of the magazine on airfares and how we've seen the pain points emerging. And sure, all of uh, the panelists on this uh, show will agree that at some point or the other this year, they have either rethought or uh, postponed their dream vacation plans because of higher airfares. Now, Manish, we do know that in June they slipped down, but will this trend sustain? Well, hi. Thank, thanks, Akhi. Well, you know, as far as the trend sustaining, that appears unlikely. And I'll tell you why. The reason is that traditionally uh, the monsoon months which start from say uh, may and uh, go on till the, towards the end of august are a lean season and as uh, we are all aware even the economic activity ebbs around this time so does travel uh, among uh, you know other activities as a result you know fares uh, ever since india has started following uh, you know dynamic pricing have also uh, you know declined during uh, you know uh, this t- uh, time frame add to that uh, you know, once, uh, you know, the festive season kicks in, say, from October, uh, then, uh, you know, bookings will again start ramping up. And if, uh, dynamic fares, which are, uh, you know, a consequence of demand and pricing, will also start appreciating. Other than that, you know, we must appreciate the fact that after uh, following the intervention by the Ministry of Civil Aviation in June, fares have only corrected in the region of 4 to 5 percent, which is you know, nominal. And when, uh, you know, uh, the various uh, people within the industry that we spoke to for this story, uh, they pointed uh, out to us that, you know, historically, even if you say, uh, take up, uh, uh, say that last year, t- uh, you know, 10 year data, even when fares have come down, it, it has happened entirely on, on the basis of a lean yes. season. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, so that is one. 
Absolutely. Manisha, I wanted to understand also what is the strategy then going forward? You know, what is the best way to ensure that we have uh, sustainably lower air fares going forward? Okay, I'll uh, you know uh, I'll uh, quickly uh, you know explain to you why the fares appreciated to the levels uh, that they did. Uh, you know very quickly, uh, and you know throw some numbers at you before I uh, come to you know your question. So basically, uh, you know one we are all aware that you know ever since uh, uh, in the post-COVID period, uh, the demand for air travel uh, uh, went up. The that so so did uh, you know the so did the number of bookings so did uh, the number of passengers in fact even within uh, you know the the peak season when uh, you know there are uh, lows uh, 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 you know the the the, the percentage of air travelers uh, has remained high this year and so especially if you look at the last five months there has been uh, you know a, uh, a sustained increase in the number of passengers number two uh, you know the losses uh, the, the gargantuan losses suffered by the airlines in the last 10 years so in the 2013-23 period there was only one year 2016 when all airlines full service at the low cost made a consolidated uh, profit of 223 crores as against cumulative losses of 98 over 98000 crores incurred by all ca- indian carriers that is true number 3 uh, you know uh, you had uh, you know oil prices surging to up to 130 uh, uh, per barrel last year after uh, you know following uh, in the aftermath of the uh, russian military action in ukraine so these are some of the reasons now how, how do you like you know, how can we best as passengers best get around this problem so so one is you know by uh, like, uh, one is by ensuring that uh, you know uh, we book uh, the tickets are booked well in advance that requires some amount of planning uh, now like uh, allow me to share something very interesting with you that you know in the post covid period the number of uh, uh, passengers booking um, their tickets uh, perhaps owing to the insecurity or the uh, the riot of uncertainty occasioned by the covid pandemic uh, has uh, it, it's like you know, in the zero to in the, in the seven seven day period has gone up significantly. Earlier it used to be fifteen days. Uh, so you know, book your ticket flights well in advance. Number two, you know, the regulators they have to take stern action in terms of on carriers, especially the who are not operating their flights. Um, you know, uh, d- d- despite. Uh, getting uh, approval for an X number of flights uh, from the aviation regulator. That is number two. And then, you know, like a very interesting suggestion came, came from a co-founder of uh, Akasa Air, uh, Praveen Ayer, that, you know, where he said that airlines would have to look at innovative way of uh, uh, controlling costs. And I think the other good news here, uh, would, uh, and Binu would agree with me, has come from uh, Bangalore. Uh, Bangalore. On Bangalore, Chennai sector, the fares have corrected by thirty uh, percent. And how has that happened? One, you know, Akasa launched uh, additional flights uh, when it launched on the sector. And uh, it, it Bino is smiling and nodding because he is the one who is actually facing all these things right there by being present in Bengaluru. Uh, Bino, anything that you'd like to add to that? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I, I, I was saying I, I totally agree with Manish and very relevant uh, observation. And yeah, that's been a problem and Bangalore has been on the receiving side of it. All right. Well, many, many thanks, Neetu. And many thanks, Manish and Binu for being with us on the show. Completely out of time on this edition. But, uh, you know, here's, uh, you know, asking all our viewers to definitely go out there and grab your copies right there out on the stands because this edition has a whole lot to offer to you from aviation to pharma to auto. And of course, from the venture capital firms as well. A lot to take in, whether you're in business, you're thinking about being an entrepreneur, everything that you would want to know from this insight. So do stay tuned on to Business Today TV to catch all the updates from the world of business and stock markets. Until then, many thanks for tuning in. Thank you.